The Forces Fatigue Resistant Device is a unique appliance designed to achieve efficient Class II correction. It is composed of two main components, a spring module and a push rod. The spring module is attached to the upper first molars through the headgear tube, and the push rod is crimped onto the lower arch wire. The device is engaged when the push rod is inserted into the spring module. The spring is deflected when it rests against the built in stop on the push rod, creating force. Whether the mouth is open or closed, when the spring is deflected on the push rod stop, it is generating force. The spring is reinforced by a telescoping mechanism. It expands and compresses along a linear axis and does not bow into the cheek. Lab tests have shown that even after millions of cycles, the spring maintains its forcibility and does not significantly fatigue. The result is an appliance that is easy to install and use, works consistently, and achieves Class II correction without requiring any form of patient compliance. The following instructions for the Forces Fatigue Resistant Device are intended to provide basic steps to install, reactivate, and remove the appliance. Before installation, there are some general clinical requirements for the Forces Fatigue Resistant Device. It is important to take the following initial steps to control desired movement of the complete mandibular arch. First, Use either a 17 by 25 stainless steel arch wire or a 19 by 25 stainless steel arch wire depending on your particular slot size. Second, ligate the lower brackets where the push rod will rest with stainless steel ligatures. This will prevent unwanted rotation of the teeth supporting the appliance's force. Third, the lower arch wire should be securely cinched to control anchorage and mesial flaring of the lower arch. Fourth, when using the Forces Easy 2 module, ensure before installation that it fits properly in the occlusal headgear tubes of the upper first molar buckle tubes. The Easy 2 module is fully compatible for use with 3M Unitech occlusal headgear buckle tubes. The length, buckle profile, or contour of headgear tubes from other manufacturers may affect the EZ2 module's ability to stay engaged, warranting a test with the buckle tube itself before installation. Finally, it's best to measure for the proper pushrod length before installing the spring module into the headgear tube. The objective is to select a pushrod length that deflects the spring enough to exert force but does not completely compress the spring when engaged. To measure the correct push rod size with the jaw in centric position, place the distal end of the measuring gauge distal to the headgear tube and the mesial end of the gauge where the push rod will be placed on the lower arch, such as against the lower cuspid bracket or the lower first bicuspid bracket or optionally against a gurin lock placed distal to the bracket on the arch wire. The appropriate size of push rod is indicated on the measuring gauge. Note that the push rods are in a left and right configuration and should be measured separately. If the measurement falls between two values on the gauge, select the shorter length as the initial push rod. With advanced preparation and measuring completed, installation can commence. There are two types of attachment mechanisms in the Forces Fatigue Resistant Device System, the L-Pin Module and the EZ2 Module. The L-Pin Module allows for more flexible installation options and movement in the mouth. The EZ2 Module allows for more consistent installation and prevents the spring from pivoting into the cheek. Together, they provide the orthodontist with options to treat each Class II case according to specific needs.
To install the L-pin module, thread the L-pin through the eyelet in the universal spring. Then thread the L-pin through the distal entry of the headgear tube. Allow about 2 millimeters of space between the distal end of the buckle tube and the universal spring eyelet. Crimp the L-pin around the headgear tube and trim as necessary with a pin and ligature cutter. There is a right and a left easy to module as indicated on the stability plate. The side of the plate that displays an R or an L faces to the lingual as the plate is inserted behind the headgear tube. Holding the mesial end of the EZ2 module with Weingart utility pliers, insert the EZ2 module clip into the headgear tube from mesial to distal until it clicks into place. Be careful not to come in at an angle. Push straight distally. The push rods are available in different lengths and are selected based on the measured value during advanced preparation. After selecting the correct push rod, place the distal end of the push rod into the opening on the mesial end of the spring module, then place the mesial end of the push rod onto the arch wire. As a final check for correct push rod sizing, with the jaw closed in centric position, make sure that the distal end of the push rod does not extend distally from the spring assembly and that the spring is not fully compressed with approximately one millimeter of activation remaining. The spring assembly length after the installation should be 20 to 22 millimeters in length. If the push rod protrudes distal of the spring module, it is too long. In that case, select a shorter length of push rod. To secure the push rod onto the arch wire, simply close the mesial loop over the arch wire with the Weingart pliers. Over time, as the class II malocclusion is corrected, the spring deflection is reduced. To reactivate the spring module, use the split crimps provided by the Forces Corrector Kit. Compress the spring so that the push rod is exposed and place the split crimp distal to the stop on the push rod. Secure the crimp onto the push rod. This will provide two millimeters of activation. If greater activation than the two millimeters provided by one crimp is required, replace the push rod with a longer push rod. First, with the patient's mouth wide open, compress the spring and remove the spring assembly from the push rod. Then, for the L-pin module, bend the L-pin straight and pull it out of the headgear tube distally. For the EZ2 module, with Weingart pliers, grip the distal end of the EZ2 module clip and pull the EZ2 module in an occlusal mesial direction, opening the clip and pulling it out of the headgear tube. Grasp the distal end of the push rod with your fingers, holding the mesial loop in place with your Weingart plier. Bend the push rod to open the mesial loop and remove it from the arch wire. The Forces fatigue resistant device is designed to provide both chair side and treatment efficiency. Please contact your 3M representative for any questions regarding the material contained in this presentation.